This is Dennis Erickson. Oh, Dennis is Erickson's here. Vines. Erickson's Vines. You've been running this vineyard for how long? Well, this is our sixth year. We're over Cabernet here. Franc. Okay. Uh, all of it. We only have an acre planted at this point. Okay. But we have the potential of putting in two more acres. Mm -hmm. Just seeing how everything goes. It's been a learning experience. Yeah. What kind of things have you learned? Oh, how to keep them alive. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. How not to overwater and yeah. do things like that. Um, yeah, that would be the biggest thing, how to keep them alive. I was going to ask you about using earthworm castings okay. and the worm tea, which okay. you applied last year. Or was it the year before? No, last year we put down the castings okay. and the tea. Yes. And this year we backed off of the castings or just using the tea. Mm -hmm. Then you'll end next year we'll put castings on and right. the tea again. Okay. So we're kind of already in it every So what year. did you observe in the beginning and then did you see any changes um, in the production of the grapes? As far as the health of the plant, they were, they were just healthy green after we went into the, using the tea. Okay. And we seem to see less pest problems and, and things like that. Oh. So it was just a, a much healthier appearance. Good. What kind of problems were there before? What kind of pests? Well, we have bugs as everybody has bugs, mm -hmm. but our biggest thing is, you know, the leaves turning different colors and getting all kinds of different answers why oh, that is. Okay. And uh, using the tea, it just seemed like uh, the majority of them were much healthier. Yeah, more uniform. Yeah. What about the quality of your grapes? Did the wineries like it and what were their uh, opinions well, on it? Well, they're, they love it. They <laughs> love it? Yeah. <laughs> They're a happy group anyhow, uh -huh. so, um, but they seem to be very pleased with it. Okay. No arguments, no, and it's been, the winery we're with now uh, has been a real positive experience and an upfront experience. What about what you're doing now with the vines? I'm starting to top them, and this mm -hmm. is a little early to be topping them, mm -hmm. but they're presently, some of them three to four feet above the top wire. That seems to work pretty good. In fact, we. We've essentially topped them every year we've had grapes, and it's worked out for us. Now, we don't know what the heat's going to be like through this summer, but we're just getting It's in. already getting hot. We're both sweating. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you had anything to say about like trying to be more green or organic. Like, is, there, is it because of the demand, or is it just your personal views on how to grow naturally? Well, my personal views, that's an interesting way of putting it. Keep in mind, when I started this six years ago, I didn't really know anything. I thought I knew something, but really, <laughs> nothing. And That's it, what you learned. <laughs> yeah. And as I got further into it, it came to the point where we realized the soil is dead. Mm. The, the soil is just, there's, there's nothing in it besides DG and some clay mixed in, and, mm -hmm. and that's it. So I finally, it got put beat on my head enough to understand that it's time for us to do something yeah. as far as building up the nutrients in the soil. Yeah, bring it to life. Right. So last year we tried the castings and the tea. Yeah. This year we planted barley down the, the walking path, you mm -hmm. might say, between the vine rows. And next year we're going to go to some mulch on the vine rows. Mm -hmm. And hopefully in time we're going to build this up. Yeah. It already is getting much easier to deal with the soil around the plants, but the rest of it we might as well build up also and get some, yeah. what we might say, a reservoir of good stuff in there rather than just dead soil. Right. Then instead of having to feed the plant, you're feeding the soil and mm -hmm. it's been built up and it's going to get healthier and healthier over yeah. the years. Awesome. So how about that for an answer? That's perfect. Okay. How about we go outside and can you show us how you're topping them so far? Oh, we can show. How many rows do you want to do? <laughs> oh, this is just this yellow. You said the ones on the left you top. Yeah. Do you go top? Yeah. All kind of like training. Yeah. And how old are these vines? Six years. They're into their yeah, six yeah. years of growth. Oh, look, there's the little grapes growing. Oh, yes, they're here. So, this is a little better oh, yeah. looking, and virtually to top these things, you just grab a hold of them, take two thumbnails, and you see this node here? 
if yeah. you take it and put your thumbnail right there and snap it, it's oh, gone. Oh, you just snap it everything. If you snap it here, it does it folds like that. Oh, you got to snap do that it off with the node, and it's oh. more happy. Don't ask me why. Do you need a just... close up of it? Can you see? Let's do another one. Okay. You know, we got a, a little over a thousand of these we could do together. <laughs> Ready? And this is called topping. Yeah. Now, we, in the past, we never had so much rain. Right. So I always had, you know, shoots that are up about this high. Uh -huh. But <laughs> these are still continuing to go. Yeah, well, you said they're happy and healthy. Yeah. So. so reach for the sun. Yeah, well, they're still working on primarily the water in the ground. Uh, we, have, we have watered a little bit, but not much. You have a hat too because of the rain? Because of the rain. And uh, You should see the soil retain water better too. Well, we do. I feel we do. You do? Yeah. Can you tell by how much water you've been using? I can tell by how much water I'm using. I can tell by... Well, that's great. Yeah, and I can it's... see the difference between the zones. That's. Oh. I mean, that one over there... He's got so much water in the ground, I haven't watered him at all. Uh -huh. Over here, I have a little bit. Uh -huh. So I individually, I can see these different areas, yeah. which is kind of neat. Well, you're spending a lot of time with them, so you, you know it's in and yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. So the problem is one of the biggest tools we have are these tendrils. <clears throat> and when they're up like they are, these guys here, yeah. they're saying, I'm happy. Yeah. Uh -huh. when, they, when they lean over or start to go down, uh -huh. they need water. Oh. I back straight out they need mm -hmm. water. But I'm snapping them off now, so I'm losing that that sensor you might say. Okay, so here's a sensor. You have three of these? I have three of these. Now below this pipe, there are three moisture sensors. There is a soil temperature sensor. There is a sensor that tells you when you irrigate and for how long. And there's also a rain sensor. Rains here, it's gonna rain down. Right. So what's up there? That that transmits it to the house. So that's kind of where we are. How about that? Well, thank you. Oh, sure. My makers are looking at bricks. They're looking at bricks. Yeah, and that's how they decide when they're gonna pick. Okay. So they'll they'll also check the pH of the bricks, and when it reaches the level they're looking for, that's picking day. Uh -huh. Is it sugar or is it? Part of it is sugar. Oh. The bricks is a, the content of sugar, and you convert the sugar into alcohol. is mm -hmm. a fermenting process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with the present wine we were using, uh, he calls picking day, and I, I think that's good because essentially he's he's my end consumer. Right. Though he's not drinking the wine, he's selling the wine, but that's okay. It's part of his reputation too. Yeah. So it, it's a good interconnection. Thing.